Uh, so from our base, this is going to be room number six up here. This is a crypt for less important burials. How big is it? I don't know. How big do you want it? That is up to you. You can make it weird shaped. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's longer, right? If it's a crypt for less important ones, then you can then put in maybe some sarcophagi or some holes in the wall in which bodies are buried along the side. And so it's really just a hallway that has uh, holes in the wall. And however you want to identify that, you can. You can make a little note. Um, maybe this is a dead end. Aha. No pun intended. Yes, it is. <clears throat> Clark is back. Need to take a few minutes for yourself? No problem, man. Do what you got to do. Have fun swinging a sword and cramped a corridor. That is true. Um, <laughs> one of my Curse of uh, Strahd uh, parties ended up running into that. They were in an underground area that was very cramped, and uh, many a sword got stuck in clay walls. Well, because I kind of like the idea of her falling off the tower, and then the PC's finding her, and she's fine, though, because she wants to hide her... Uh, oh, oh, that's true if she hasn't shifted, right? Ooh, that's an interesting indicator. I uh, wonder if any explanation. Yeah, that would freak him out. Wow. So the final character was a monk? Yes. Yep, uh, a way of shadow monk. So she's working as a backup dancer slash possibly security. Yeah, you know, and it, it's so easy to do, right? Uh, as, as I want to present to you all that are out there, whether you're old-time DMs or whether you're first-timers, you don't really need anything elaborate. You get all the shapes and colors you need. It's super simple. So let's uh, let's move forward, and then there's a and then there was one. What's our next chamber? An antechamber for those that have come to pay respect for the dead or prepare themselves for burial rituals. Okay, so if this is um, an antechamber, it'll be off to the side. So let's build that here. And we could probably even have a passage of some kind come off of this. In fact, if it's an antechamber, there we go. That is going to flow into our next area. And our next area is going to be an 11. And what's an 11? A gallery to display <clears throat> the deeds of the deceased through trophies, statues, paintings, and so forth. And as we're going, make, a, make an explanation. You know, have something in mind. Why are the, why are the rooms arranged as they are, right? Someone purposely built and carved this. Challenge yourself. Especially if you're letting the randomness flow through you. Yeah, was that a six? Oh no, that was the antechamber. And then this one was the um, less important. This was a six. Now, off of here, what's the next thing that we have coming up? A four. Crypt for less important burials? Okay. That works. And then we have another one in an antechamber for those who have come to pay respects. So we can put another one of these between here. And then we have a one. And then what, what was this? A, well, between four and eight. So... Here's where the lesser important people were buried here. And there's an antechamber to remember the, the mass graves. Here's a trophy hall for people who are 
You know, you, you come in and you take the long route here. Maybe this is a special antechamber of some kind. <clears throat> so what do you use for notes to remember the room placements, like remembering which is the antechamber? Yeah, you can just write it on there. I found a potion of feather fall on the side of the tower on my way down. <laughs> I just flapped really hard. He, uh, you, uh, you fell and forgot to, uh, oh, what was that? How to fly in, um, galaxy or the, uh, hitchhiker's guide to the, the galaxy. You, uh, you fall and you forget to land or something. You, or you, you trip and forget to fall. Is that how it is? Shoot. I should know this. Shame on me. An aggressively bad lie. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. You fall and miss the ground. That's right, Bobicus. That is how that is how people fly. And you know, uh by the way, do you want doors everywhere? Do you want a door on both ends? You can. Are they left open or is it just an open passageway? You know, consider that too. Not everything has to be behind uh doors. A lot of times there's just hallways. So this is indicating that off of um, off of our trophy room, you could just go into this corridor, but there is a, a, a room here. And so this would mean, in this case, um, this would indicate that he, this is its own chamber. And so we could move this one maybe up here to show that this is an open entrance. Where you place the doors can give clues. And by the way, <clears throat> if you have sneaky PCs, you might have PCs that ask you on which side of the door is the hinge. That is a very good question. And you should be prepared for that. Which side of the door is the... Uh, on which side of the door is the hinge? And can you imagine why they would ask that? <laughs> uh, if you want to share it, Dark Wolf, you're welcome to. So that was the one. We made the antechamber. And so maybe these actually, hang on, let's go back to here. Maybe there's just a door that connects these two areas. Right? Like you got the little chapel up here for the less important folk. Because you're telling a story also. You know, dungeons and tombs and whatnot are little time capsules. They will reveal a lot about a people, a society, their faith, their philosophies, their art. <clears throat> Use all of those as hints. Build a story around what they're observing. You know, cause your players to think about things forensically. Why did someone build this? Because obviously it hasn't been detected until now. Volvo, hey. Well, cheers with a... Uh, Cheers with a, a piece of uh, sl uh, thin uh, thin crust pizza. Silver, yeah. Doors open, slide open or down or go down. Clark, hey, thanks for joining us. Salute, and uh, I hope to see you back here, man. Thank you for uh, hanging out with us tonight. Well, Clark, it looks like Volvo's uh, taking your form, and, uh... <laughs> now we're on an 11 again. Another gallery. <clears throat> so we have a gallery, and we have two galleries. Why do we have two galleries? Maybe they're connected by passage. Who knows? It's up to you. Well, maybe one gallery is for common things and others are for more expensive. Maybe there's two major families that were buried here and each family has a gallery of some kind of their own. All right, we're, we're coming up with random ideas. We're building a story, though, about who was here and who built this place. Now, if we have a gallery, 
Maybe this is common everyday living that kind of cycles back here for the commoners in the graves. Maybe this is the the Richie Rich Gallery. And in which case, what do we have coming up next? We have, an, we have a six. Oh, a crypt for... Um, so another one for less important burials. So let's make another one here. Are, is one of these for humans and one for elves and one for gnomes? Did they racially segregate their dead? Are they mixed? Is it because of where they lived within the society that used to be here? Maybe this one doesn't even have a door. It's just left open. And it's not connected. It is connected. Why? Think about it. Throw ideas out there. What's coming up next? We have a 15. A robing room for priests to prepare for uh, burial rituals. Okay, so this could very well be something off to the side. And maybe we even want to put this behind a secret door, right? If the priests want to make an appearance of some kind. Uh, let's see. So we have some galleries. Maybe we are going to have a secret room down here. Uh, maybe right, so if we have it feed into here, that would give them access coming up here. So what we'll do is this. That. And then we'll put something here. And then we'll put something here. And then what you can do is draw in something that looks different. What would, whoops. What would catch the attention? How can you make it stand out against the others? So there's gonna be a secret door here and a secret door here. If your players want to explore every nook and cranny of a dungeon, which they are most likely going to want to do, this is where you can ask them to show some kind of um, perception. Now, many people will also just write in a little S to show that it's secret for them on, the, on like the DM layer, if we're talking for, uh, for Roll20. So this is their own place where the priests can go and they don't need to worry about people following them and there could be maybe more treasures or a lot of cultural clues or if you're trying to put a mystery together through the dungeon, if this is where the priests hung out, there could be notes or paintings or something. <clears throat> you could build a whole world of uh, horoscope-based countries. Yeah, yeah, you could do something like that. No problem. No problem at all. Oh, nice nat 20 there. <laughs> uh, so you can see now, so on and so forth. We have, uh, we are, we've built a dungeon. We built a tomb, right? Uh, people are buried here. There's cultural, uh, there's cultural considerations. Um... There's a chance for you to populate it with history. You can populate it with monsters. You know, how large is this uh, Is this here? And you just say, okay, well, we're going to make a bunch of... Uh, a bunch of tombs on the side. You can just draw them in if you want. And you say, all right. As a DM... You want to offer a random encounter. If the PCs explore a sarcophagus, there's a... I don't know. You can even say, like, odds or evens. There's a 50% chance that um, an undead will pop out. And you just make a little margin note right here, right? 50% uh, skeleton. Now, I would imagine your, I just put Skelly, your players are going to wonder, all right, why are only some skeletons coming up and not all of them? Well, what is the reason? Is it just a slow reawakening process? Um, are, the, are the skeletons who are rising up of a particular faction or race, or are they wearing certain objects? Build a story. 
it's random it's it's seemingly random but you can find order in the chaos and and this would allow for some surprise encounters as well or if you don't want it to be skeletons maybe um, a swarm of centipedes crawls up out of uh, one of the tombs hey derek welcome and you can also offset that by by saying look so in this one especially because this is going to be the first one that they encounter right you have all the sarcophagi over here Maybe this one only has a uh, a 10% chance. So why is it moving a little bit further in? Does it go up to 50? Or did they encounter the one in 10 and they were wearing a green gem and now all of a sudden everyone, 50% of whoever's buried in here, because look, as a DM, do you want to populate an entire tomb? You can. Nothing is stopping you from doing so. But it, it could be easier to say, okay, so more green gem people were buried here than the occasional one here. And then maybe if they want to go into, into this one, this could just be um, 90% will be an undead, a skeleton or, or a mummy or something that pops up. And if we populate it through here, what if, uh, and, and you as a DM are saying, oh, well, why is that actually? I like the idea. I want to offer some random encounters that are thematic. Like I don't want to waste the time of my players. And you just get to a point where maybe there's another chamber over here of some kind. There's another 15, which is a robing room for priests. Um, this one actually has some priests that died in the robing room. And they, they're, you know, maybe they died while casting a spell or their bones are still channeling some sort of energy. And it's bleeding out, right? If we put that room right over here. And if we made uh, if we made this uh, maybe the obvious one, right? You have the hidden one. Oh, there's got to be an obvious one. So you can just fill something in. Oh yeah, there's a uh, there's some kind of an orb, or there's some sort of a, a device, or the the uh, the reanimated corpse, or the not quite dead corpse of one of the old priests is giving off necromantic magic, and you can tell that by a uh, de detect magic or an arcana check or history, some or even a religion. And so the closer you get to this room, especially because if these are the, the pauper's graves, uh, they don't have any, they, like, they wouldn't have as much uh, ritual or protection or, you know, magical diffusion. You've, you're now creating story and story and story. You have a mystery to the dungeon when it was 100% just randomly rolled. Yet you're sticking to a thematic, uh, you're sticking to a thematic set of guidelines for the dungeon. There is one Bobacus. The offering of high or low choice is a great way to develop hesitation or tension. Yes. Derek says, so I got devoured by a gelatinous cube because I tried to do something heroic out of heroic out of spite. How is how can you be heroic out of spite? <laughs> can you explain that a bit? So look, super easy. We've just made our own little dungeon. We've given something compelling. We've given something cultural. Um, there's a, there's something that you could pick up, right? If you have this necromantic orb. Well, even if no one in the party is evil or a necromancer and wants to use it, now that the dungeon is explored, do you trust other people not to come in and, and pillage the place and pick up this black skull or something? Or are, are you going to be good guys and take it out of here and have to suffer the consequences of burying it? Like B-E-A-R-I-N-G, not burying it. <clears throat> and if you want to continue to roll off of here, well, it just so happens that uh, there is a museum here. What if we make a very difficult um, hidden door here? <laughs> And this leads to a treasure vault area. Pardon me. 
Hey, look at this. The first thing that's here, a guard room to defend against intruders. That seems like uh, something that'd be really good for a, a transitional area. And you can put in undead guards, maybe some statues or golems or gargoyles that are in here, right? If they don't, uh, if they don't register as, oh yeah, we are these people, maybe they're set to auto attack. Or all the guards are dead. Maybe someone beat you to it. Even if that was a hundred years ago. Leave forensic evidence. Leave clues. Dungeons are moments trapped in time. They are instances, as is indicated by popular MMO uh, terms. I am reading funny and Derek, but I don't want to be rude and talk with my mouth open here. Oh, I see what you're getting at. Oh, and funny, same tactic? Okay. Tension argument, Bobicus. Now what we're going to do here, this was 6T. Oh, this was another 15 here. Because we kind of skipped one over. Whatever. So this is room number six, and we're using the treasure vault. So if you, uh, you know, well, we can go TR or TM, or we just call this like B or V or whatever. This is a guard room. Populate it as you want. In fact, if you, if you run kind of a stream of consciousness dungeon like this, let's say the party didn't pop any skeletons either because they got lucky on the rolls that you made, or you have to account for the fact the party just might not be curious. They might go for obviously ooh shiny stuff, or they're li or you might have a, a very conscientious party member say, look, these people are dead and buried here. We can't open these sarcophagi. It would be rude. It would be against uh, everything that what this place was meant to do. And you hear, you, you as a DM are like, oh no, I wanted them to fight skeletons. I don't care if they desecrate tombs. It sounds harsh to say, but look, you have an intention as a DM, right? Well, your players don't know one thing or the other. You could very well say, all right, fine. You guys didn't have an encounter here. I wasn't really planning on having one here in the guard room to the treasure vault. Though I will now. And you just, you go flip, 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 and you go over to gargoyles, or you go over to a shield guardian, or something like that. Or, you know, you go to some zombies if you really want to. By observing the room, you are reanimating the dead. It's, it's very quantum. Oh, silver, I like that. Yeah, right? <laughs> so really, like, in in every sarcophagus, they, you know, you have people going through, like, entire... Ooh, that could be a really cool idea, right? You have, like, these whole... You have people kind of going through this, this quantum state of, like, the life cycle of, you know, babies to adults or whatever, and then, you know, elderly, and they pass on, they then they come back. And it's only until you open the coffin that they are identified as what they were. And so you as a DM, if you want to paint, if you want to paint that flavor, I mean, whether or not they look fresh is up to you, but you can even say, yeah, I'll, uh, if I, if you want to describe, look, not all zombies are medium sized adults. Could something have happened that, you know, it, it killed kids. What if there was like a mass murderer on the loose who was a psycho kid killer and they dedicated one of these burial chambers to all the all the little victims of this horrible crime. Suddenly, all the skeletons are small sized, or you could do that kind of that very quantum thing that uh, that Silver had brought up. You're still telling a story, and especially think of it this way: if you are in a party as PCs and you're going Indiana Jones into a rando uh, dungeon here, you open three coffin lids, and all of them are are small sized. You're either going to think, well, are they halflings? But hey, a medicine check, right? We're, we want to draw on different skills. A medicine check might be able to tell that. Maybe a history. And when they realize, ooh, these belong... These are these are small dragonborn bones. Who is killing dragonborn kids? I don't know. Was it a cult wanting to sacrifice uh, dragon blood for something? Was it, again, was it uh, someone who... Maybe it was a, uh, a dwarf who just says death to all dragonborns and, and went on a rampage. 
And so this place is in, you know, is a resting place for that. You can tell a story even through all of these random elements. And again, you can float things. Do your players know that you have a, an encounter table for these rooms? Or that by a certain point you say, I want them to have at least fought something? So if they get to the very end of the area, there's something there waiting for them because you want to try and chip at them, or even again, not not just to chip at them for to you know to try and kill them, but you want to tell a story. Something is here. Every zone of this dungeon is going to have an encounter. Uh, so now let's say we have uh, right. We have this guard room. Well, if they're guarding something more, uh, more. Whoops, not that. What are they guarding? Well, I don't know. Let's. Let's put some doors in, right? We'll do this. Nice and easy. There we go. Nice little, nice little T junction here. Whoops. <laughs> Wrong color. We'll just fill that in real quick. There we go. Bink, bink, and bink. Now, there are two doors, for whatever reason we want, are coordinating or are, are cordoning off this hallway. Is it a security measure? It is a little bit more secure. Think about that. Why are there two doors? Is this meant to trap people, maybe? Is it just meant to, I don't know. What is it meant to do? Why are there two doors? Do you want murals or other decorative elements along here showing the treasures of the realm, what the golden city underneath the sands looked like before it was buried by the desert? Uh, th this could be very good narrative. Uh, uh, um, maybe even a literal timeline that your PCs are going to be walking down. And then you'll have something fun for them to encounter in the next room, right? There you go. Meanwhile, we have a T-junction over here that's going to lead to uh, a couple more rooms. What are those rooms? I don't know. Let's find out. We are in uh, we are in a treasure vault. So that our next one is an eleven. That is a uh, kitchen for feeding guards. Hey, all right, that makes sense. That means that if there's a kitchen here, they were brought supplies, and there were people who were meant to be down here. So it's obviously an important place if someone is willing to give up their life and a job to be down here and um, and uh, and be a part of what's happening. If you don't think it's significant, or if you want to squeeze it in someplace, you can. Uh, we can end up making, um, let's see, we had an 11. Here's their, here's their break room. Here's their kitchen. 17 is next. Trap or other trick designed to kill or capture creatures that enter the dungeon. Okay. Um... Bink, this is an excellent place for that. And then we can look up traps in the DMG or create ones of our own. Next, two. An armory containing mundane and magic gear used by the treasure vault's guards. Well, if here's the kitchen, here's a good armory location. And what's one? An antechamber for visiting dignitaries. Okay. So maybe... One, here's our here's our dignitaries. So they're taken through, there's the guard room, there's a trap of some kind, so maybe maybe it scans for people who are not supposed to be here. Well, dignitaries are supposed to be there, but if someone's not, you catch them in that kill zone because it's, it's trapped between two doors. And someone's trying to get into the vault or whatever, boom, there's your kill zone. 
And then if they actually make it down here, here's the antechamber for vis for visiting dignitaries. All of a sudden, not only do you have the local culture and uh, a piece of history visiting dignitaries, while well, they're probably going to put up artwork or religious artifacts or things along those lines of the people who lived around them at that point in time, too. Excellent storytelling. Excellent storytelling. Then lastly, we have a 20. Oh, another, another trap here. And so this could have been very well set up for specifically for baffling, uh, you know, tomb raiders or, uh, you know, uh, uh, grave robbers. Right. So, oh, this is mundane. This is mundane. Oh, there's something else here. There's got to be something, right? There's got to be bleh. And then they die in this room. There could very well be something important. Just because it says a, a trap or trick designed to kill or capture a creature that enters, that doesn't mean that there's not a very juicy, um, I don't know, there's some kind of a, uh, there's bait over here, right? They purposely set bait to lure people in, and there you go. But in reality, look, these were guards that are they're sort of guards of the dead, and they're also guards to usher in living, uh, hey, thank you, Sketch Ben, I really appreciate that. But they're also meant to uh, to host other people who are coming, maybe to even visit the graves. And you could even extend this beyond. You know, if you're using graph paper, have fun with it. But look, we've just now generated a dungeon, a, a culture. We've we've generated random encounters, and we we've, we've woven a story. Everything that's there is there for a reason. Do we know what that reason is initially? No. Just like when we make our characters up here. Whoop! Well, not those. But, you know, you can fill in more details here if you like something else. You know, maybe, who um, maybe past this, uh, it becomes a temple or shrine or a stronghold of some kind. And you can have phases to your dungeon that makes sense to you. But as we make our characters, right, it's random numbers that we throw out there. And then it's up to us to weave together what's there. The DMG is very powerful in that it can give you those abilities. You just have to have confidence in yourself to be able to you know, string everything together and come up with a reason why, why is there a kitchen right next to the entrance? You know, your players might ask you, and maybe you feel dumb as a DM. You're like, oh, why is there a kitchen? And then you respond, you say, why not? It's mundane, right? Nothing to steal, nothing, you, nothing, nothing you, uh, you grave robbers uh, would probably want here. You know, it's a, it's a very common room where you could make the kitchen into, it says kitchen in the book, but you take the spirit of kitchen and it's really like a mess hall. And so there's places to sit and there's cooking implements and, and you go from there. So then it becomes instead of a, a place to cook meals, it's now a place for people to gather and to talk and yes, cook and, uh, and cook as well. Hi, Sketch Ben. Yeah. By the, uh, hopefully, uh, oh shoot, I, uh, I was on my soapbox. Yobs Gaming, thank you for popping in and participating in the conversation. It looks like you've been taken care of, though, pretty well. Thank you, community, for doing that while I was on my roll here for uh, <laughs> for generating the dungeon. Yob says, hey, pretty new to D&D. Normally, I like necromancers in most RPGs, but it seems hard to play one with other players, a.k.a. group settings. <clears throat> the minion hurting asks Bobicus. It is a school of magic for wizards, yes. I was looking at Warlock in comparison. Discord in a group isn't always a bad thing as long as it's done the right way, yes. Uh, so, oh, oh, I was going to say something and then... Uh, thank you, Yobs. Uh, thank you for that. It looks like everyone here was taking care of you. Uh, King, it's not always to depend on your party. Most groups are willing to throw aside any sort of biases. Um... Let me make sure that you aren't going to make points here that I'm that I'd bring up too. Uh, funny, that is true. Necromancy is not inherently evil. <laughs> the king, put sunglasses on your thrall so nobody knows they're dead. Brilliant plan, Silver. Brilliant, flawless. Love it. <laughs> Make sure DM knows what you're doing and you want to be dynamic. Like, I don't, uh, I want to have it happen to me. Secret playing a necromancer. The DM outed you is immediately wearing black robes and skulls everywhere. <clears throat> Work with your DM. I'd love to help one of my players build a more specific necromancy. Yes. All right. So, uh, Yobs, you have gotten really good advice. 
you do not have to be evil, super evil, black robe, skull wearing bad guy to be a necromancer. In fact, in 5th edition, bards, wizards, clerics, and paladins can be necromancers in the sense that they cast, uh, that they have several like key necrotic spells that they can, that they can throw out there. Um, but think of it this way too, Yobs. Necromancy is about the process of life and death, not just death. You can be a necromancer and you could be a doctor. You could be a necromancer and you can be a um, an investigator, right? Maybe a, a homicide detective. You can be a necromancer and, and you can deal uh, with uh, other processes of life or death. Of investigation, you're actually aiding society. You can be a good guy necromancer. Also, some societies might not care that um, a body is raised back up. In fact, you could argue it's cheap labor, right? The person's soul is gone, and if the religion or the culture of the area is there, their soul's passed on. Their body's just gonna rot away and be meat. Well, why not? Um, why not put them to work for the betterment of everyone who's here? And so actually necromancy is a good thing because it advances society. It creates a labor force. There's a lot of ways you can look at it instead of just the, the very stereotypical, uh, stereotypical like, yes, good, good, more skeletons of orphans and kittens. <laughs> and also, Yobs, yes, consistency is the last boss of D&D. <laughs> Mighty Greedo, hey, welcome aboard. Thank you for joining the conversation. Your ne your necromancer in D3 is the nicest guy I know. <laughs> you know, uh, while I, I do play D3, Greedo, uh, I have not yet downloaded that. I, I did want to and try it to compare back to D2, and uh, I'm glad that he's a, he's a super awesome dude. <clears throat> Warlock is good flavor-wise, but even the managing summons is a problem. Um, yeah, so Bobicus is, is giving you a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of real talk about that too. Um, in if we want to use Diablo terms, if you go a summoning route uh, with a magic user, uh, or in this case a necromancer, it can turn into a lagromancer, right? When Diablo two first came out, some platforms couldn't just handle twenty skeletons bopping around on a map. Um, that summoning aspect can slow down the game. Even in combat, unless your DM trusts you to roll all of your attacks and add appropriately so that when it's your turn, you just give them the numbers and say, I hit with three, miss with four, or whatever. Um, but summoning can, because you're creating NPCs on the map, right? More stuff to manage. And when you get down to a round-by-round -round basis, um, that, can, that can cause problems. But communication with a DM is, I mean, that, that's solution number one to anything. <laughs> Sketchbed, no skeletons of kittens. Dark Wolf says, reminds me of a story someone posted on the Discord about a good guy necromancer. Uh, Silver, those types of countries could have weird relationships with other uh, very protected dead. That's true, right? Because you say, oh, well, I'll trade with you. You have goods and services I want, but you're weird and don't respect your dead. You don't bury them. You, you work their fingers to the bones, and then even then you put their bones to work until they're ash or dust or whatever. You know, and then the person just says, yeah, why don't you? You're just going to let that hunk of meat rot in a, in a stone box forever? Why? Though Corn knows two people, he'd love to die and bring back his slaves. He could use a cook and a house cleaner. Oh, yeah, because zombie is coming out of um, it was a neurotoxin used down in the uh, in the in the Caribbean countries. It was a neurotoxin from a fish that would put people in like a stupor, and um, so the the witch doctor or the voodoo priestess or whatever would be able to give them simple commands because they they couldn't really think or go outside of that, and so they'd kind of shamble around and, and do the uh, the bidding of the witch doctor. Yob says, I've applied to like 15 different online groups, but not, but always get turned down. So I don't know if it was because I was a necro. Well, without knowing more about the process or, 
what the requirements are. I, I, I can't really say I've heard of applications to online groups myself. I'm anecdotal evidence, though. Um, though, it, it, necromancy does have, by default, everyone kind of clenches up and is like, oh, you're going to be one of these people. You're going to want to go into every graveyard and, you know, res up a bunch of skeletons and zombies and, and whatever. And when it, necromancy doesn't have to be like that at all, Yobs. Funny says, so Funny's been DMing a while. Conjure uh, woodland animals or whatnot can be a bane. It can slow things down. Also, Yobs, uh, Derek is a very good source to talk about um, necromancy and such. Not that others in here aren't, but for sure, Derek, uh, like this is a strong point for him. So he can give you some good advice too. <laughs> funny <laughs> yeah they'll just summon a bunch of bears and whatever to do their bidding it, I don't know it'd still be interesting sometime yeah if you all have um, if, if you all have insight into Yobs asking Best advice for finding a group online. That um, I know there's forums. There's different forums you could find, uh, especially on Roll20 and other virtual tabletops. I've not had to use them, so I cannot give you specific advice myself. Though I'm sure there are as many people over here in chat land that would be able to give you some heads up there. And, you know, if any of you are here, you're new to D&D &D at all, or if you're just new to the channel and you've, you've played as a player and or a DM... Ask questions, feel free to lurk, speak up, say, hey, what is, what does, um, you know, even though we're talking about dungeons, what does rustic hospitality mean? What, what kind of an ability is that? This is an open forum. This is questions and answers. This is us coming together as a community to improve the role-playing experience for us all. Scareman, hey, thank you for, um, thank you for uh, giving some access to, or uh, some answers to uh, Yobs. I appreciate that. Oh, and Scareman is saying always vet your potential group members. No, that could be true too, right? I remember um, playing some Minecraft, and uh, you know, if you just invite anyone in there, they'll they'll blow up creepers on your stuff and <laughs> go from there. Mm -hmm. good advice Derek if you can get away in your bio without even saying I play a necromancer instead say I'm playing a doctor or I'm playing an investigator I'm playing a forensic psychologist because people will hear certain uh, keywords and they'll just shut down like Derek probably doesn't say I'm playing a chaotic evil necromancer uh, Derek will probably phrase it in a much different way because he's not being a meme of a chaotic evil necromancer. He is going to play a full, like a fully fleshed out character that has personality traits as such, but he's going to go by the pitch that he has given people. I don't want to put words in your mouth, Derek, if I'm off about that, but that's the impression that I've always picked up from you as you've been a part of our community for a while now. Oh, that's cool of you to offer sketch, Ben. Uh, by the way, Sketch, uh, I, I think I asked this before, Did you got my messages earlier, right? <laughs> Funny. <laughs> yep, they all just summoned wolves and the barbarian decided to use an action on his turn to take out his bedroll and take a nap. Hmm. <laughs> Now, you say that, Delcorn, but did you install the Skyrim mod on Minecraft? Come on, real talk. Mm 
Oh, you play Star Wars F uh, FFG, so finding good groups online can be tough. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's something else, too. Uh, Scareman, that you brought up. It is a DM market right now. I mean, it probably always will be. If you are uh, Yobs or anyone else out there, if you're willing to step up and run the game, you will. it'll be so much easier to find players. Now, is that the difference between... And there's a difference between wanting to play a cool, like a necromancer character you're talking about, Yobs. But you can still do that. You know, maybe, maybe you introduce the idea of a good guy necromancer as an NPC. Um, and then you build a group and they, and they see that, okay, I'm not running a lol random evil necromancer who just wants to, you know, raise grandpa and grandpa, you know, every time he goes through the village kind of a thing. So, um, and, and two, why we do a lot of D and D 101 stuff. Look, we just built a dungeon using the DMG and MS paint. Oh, and, uh, open office. Yep, Derek, you got to work on the pitch. Yeah, give an example, man. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I I will need those as well, uh, it, like in accordance with what Caden's saying. I'm getting to that point. And got him is working on some commissions. Yep. Okay. Nope, vanilla, only because I'm too old to figure out how to mods. Oh, hey, you got to drag and drop, and is that a double click? It was so much easier five years ago. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, there isn't anything to add uh, to you. Literally, can only post your character's name, class, level. There isn't anything else uh, that you can put in as a pitch. Oh, yeah. Yep, that character, Derek. When I used to play, it was a no-no to disclose one's alignment or even ask someone what it was. It all... Uh, oh, yeah. And that, that's uh, that's true, too. So it's sort of like... Um, if that's all they can they can do is, uh, is ask for a character name, class, and level, it sounds like they're just slotting to fill, like, damage per round rolls, almost, Yobs. Those, they might be doing you a favor and saying uh, no, because do you want to, well, I don't know. Do you want to play the type of game where you just kick in doors and kill monsters and maximize your DPR? Or do you want to play a game where you can develop your character, get into role playing or whatever? <laughs> Delcarn's going old school. Yeah, I mean, if they just want people who can fog a mirror and fill a a, a, a slot in a party, like, oh, we need um, we need non magical ranged, and uh, so look for whoever says they're playing a ranger or like a particularly like a bow ranger. And you know what? Interesting that that topic is brought up because Yobs, anyone else? The challenge this week, pardon me for talking with a mouthful. In the prior week, I said, look, in 5th edition, you can run a party with all of the same class. And you're going to have five different characters doing five different things. Dark Wolf said, why don't we, why don't we make a band? Hey, hey, thank you very much, Scareman. So Dark Wolf said, why don't we make a band? Let's go bards. At least four of them have to be bards. This week, we randomly generated four different bards, and we left the fifth slot of the band open to be whatever. And we we did get four different bards, four different personalities, four different alignments, four different sets of skills, and, 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 um, uh, and especially skill spreads as bards. You know, look at this. Would, would you tell... Would you be able to tell if I just described a um, a stout halfling walking up to you and she's wearing half plate mail, 
long sword and shield in hand, and uh, and she's built like a like a brick house. Is the first thing that comes to mind a bard? Look at her charisma. We made her charisma ten. She will come up and she will whoop you, and she will like she will whoop you into submission. And it'll be difficult to hit her because look at her AC. She is a bard. She is she is no multi-classing. This is all within the vanilla bread and butter uh, bard rolls. And so you can have, you can make differences of of characters. And and if that's the type of game you want to get into, look for that kind of open mindedness. Not okay. So we need a tank. We need you know whatever, and go from there. Yobs. It is a DM market, and you will find a lot of people. You'll find more people who want to play. The now the the thing is, if you're going to be a DM, you got to make sure that you can manage your community at your table. You don't have to know everything about D and D. You don't need to know all the rules, though. You do need to be a judge. You need to be an adjudicator. You need to be a storyteller. This is my personal bias. Again, if you just want to run a, a kick in the door and kill the monsters dungeon, that's super easy to do. If you want to tell a compelling, a compelling tale, if you want to be a storyteller, if you want you to encourage your players to think creatively, you have to say, you, you have to work on saying no, comma, but instead of just saying no. <clears throat> Pardon. Silver, I was going to be the DM for a group of friends brought together, but then my other friend said that she wanted to do it and it took it off my uh, off your hands. Oh. Mighty Greedo, the next time I go to Supercuts to get my hair cut, I'm going to first demand that stylist tell me what her alignment is. Then we can proceed. Oh, <laughs> That's right. I don't want you cutting my hair unless you're neutral good, maybe chaotic good. <laughs> Greedo. As far as you can, at some point, someone will say they want to DM, and then yeah, yeah, and you can take a break. You can even pass it around. Like, does it have to be some super serious epic Lord of the Rings or some other epic poem, Beowulf, for your first campaign? No. Look, we made a we we made this dungeon in paint, and we gave it a story. We gave it culture. We talked about encounter tables and how you can draw meaning from randomness and in, in life. If you're offering people the ability to have a good time, that is winning D and D. It's not about defeating a bad guy or getting a MacGuffin or creating a Mary Sue character or whatever. It's, um, is everyone having fun? It could be super wacky, wild adventures, you know, with, uh, with Rob Schneider rated PG-13 and still be awesome and memorable years to come. <clears throat> Pardon me. You know, Derek, I think that is part of it. But if a game group is just looking for the equivalent of ASL, right? You know that old acronym from AOL chat rooms that, yeah, I mean, sure, I'm sure it's still isn't used, right? But if all you care about in finding um, a friend or more is ASL, you're going to get ASL players. You, however, seem to have found a group that you ingratiated yourself with. You've proved that you can be an evil character, but not be a bad guy about any, being an evil character. Another problem with DMing, once you head down that path, yeah, <laughs> such as the DM's curse. Curse, shaking the chains. Oh, the old improv rule of yes and. That's a very good one, Doss. Very good one. You also need to be unbiased, meaning you have to be objective when it comes to certain things. Yes, Caden. Oh, and we're, we're getting some carrots in here, too, right? What, what the above says. Dorgrim, yeah, I have the DM's curse always running, never uh, someone offering to run for me. But we, Maddie and I, were just taught, just say no, you're messing with my brain. <laughs> you say no, and you got to get out of there. You jerks just tell people to DM for you. <laughs> I've got several noob DMs to man up in his in this fashion. 
King is, uh, you know, he's saying, let's get down to business. The first time I GM Star Wars, three of my five players were very experienced GMs who just wanted the chance to play. Talk about trial by fire. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that the doctors let the inmate run the asylum for a little bit, huh? <laughs> well, were they cool about it, Scareman? Like, did they, did they let you make mistakes and then afterwards say, hey, this is, think about things this way? Hopefully they weren't micromanaging your game. If I didn't work so much, I'd love to run for a group of DMs. Yeah, wouldn't... <laughs> DMs play D&D. &D. <laughs> just, yeah, just to give you a well-needed break. Yeah, think, that, that'd be efficient too, right? They'd all have their moves lined up. Like, all you have to do is put the initiative up and, and, and hopefully things will be smooth. They won't. We're all going to argue and we're going to still delay on our turn. And... <laughs> <clears throat> Kalani, hey Kalania, advanced squad lead, leader is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> clearly, clearly. Yubs Gaming, I'm very immersive kind of person that wants a long-term party that doesn't want to go into a dungeon, kill six goblins and a goblin king, and that's it. Uh, I want uh, to be a tiny quest and as much a bigger... Okay. That, that wide-eyed wonderment uh, is... That is what I favor. You know, I have a bias towards storytelling. And not just, you know, DPR, care op, min-max. Um, I can very much sympathize with what you're doing, Yobs, and I think a lot of us in here can too. Most, if not all. Basic thing to being a DM, remember that your players are just as much a part of the story as you are. Yes, PCs are co-DMs. It's their story too. If they want some, to do something wacky, let them try. Eh, yeah, <laughs> you can always throw out, are you sure? And you kind of like... Slowly have a d20 circling in your hand. Are you sure? Yes, you can. I can roll too. <laughs> ah, is das ist und Partinom? Ja, das ist und Partinom. Welcome or welcomen. We had a small group of DMs playing Russian roulette on the screen. Uh, fun. Oh, fun uh, one shots. Cool. I remember, uh, you might envision characters being played a certain way, like a mage being a mage, a druid being uh, granola, etc. But the character is just going to be different uh, from person to person. Oh yeah, pass the story is a fun way to do things too. Scareman, yeah, I've edited them all beforehand to make sure they wouldn't be a rules lawyer. That said, I told them to feel free to point out mistakes if I made especially blatant ones, because I wouldn't accept 15 minutes of arguing. Yeah, <laughs> that, that that was cool and open-minded of you, Scareman. Cade, my demon and druid on uh, how they should make might not be the same. That, that is very much true. Um, a druid that I would run, uh, even though you could put the same character, you know, even the same background in front of each of us, and I bet we'd pilot that character differently. Interviewing the group beforehand really made a difference, I think, and they really wanted to be a player for once. Yeah, that helped because then they're invested in wanting to not be that guy at the table. Everyone would actually have their spells ready, not have to look it up for 40 minutes. Yeah, hopefully, right? If anything, PCs are the story that, yeah. Uh, Derek, how I like to, actually, you might appreciate this. Uh, have you have you read the book or seen the movie The Langoliers by Stephen King? Um, it, the basic premise is there's a, uh, a plane of people that go through like a, I don't know, like a time warp. And it lands, and everything... It's like they've gone back in time, but it's all frozen. Like, they went to a moment in time. So, like, food doesn't taste like food, and, and everything is just... It's static and dark. Well, if I'm a living person of the present, and I picked up a match in the past, my presentness would allow the match to light, but only if I interacted with it. PCs are like that. Your world is static until they until they look at it, or as um, as it was brought up before, it's it's that quantum you know it's as Silver had brought up it's that quantum state. Nothing is dynamic and living until the PCs observe it and interact with it. Yes, it is. You might have timetables going on in the backgrounds, but thematically, it is a it is a quantum state of it doesn't exist until it's observed, and the only people who can observe it are your PCs. Uh, Scareman says, I, th uh, hang on, hang on, I might have missed a couple other things. 
Okay, so it's past the story. Yep, 40 minutes for looking up that. I found I'm ruling that discourages rules line. Yeah, or especially if you add in a qualifier, Bobacus, of to keep things going, I'm gonna let it I'm gonna let it stand where it is. We'll look it up later. Or no but, or just this one time, or give you know, if you want to be supportive and proactive, given that you've been paying attention and um and you've been participating, you know, as a reward, I don't know. I'm gonna err on your side and let it happen this once and we'll see where it goes from there. You can add a qualifying statement to stuff like that as a DM. Oh, Party Gnome gave me a smile. Thank you, Party Gnome. <laughs> Kalania, wacky things. Hold on. <laughs> Talk with the players first. See what they like to do when playing a campaign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny how it's almost like interviewing for a job. Are you a team player? Can Can you please take the uh, Myers Briggs personality test? I, I need to build my party. Uh, we have a slot for an ENFJ. Um, and then uh, I need an I, uh, an I, uh, ITNS. Right? Is that... I might have gotten confused. You get what I'm going for, right? <laughs> oh, what did the DM say, Party Gnome? Actually, it looks like you've answered already. I'm I'm lost back in time, like, a, like in uh, the Langoliers. That's the case. You invest in PCs. Uh, don't make the new GM mistake of thinking a game is them witnessing. Yeah, they're they're not there to watch you uh, flaunt and wax poetically about your your magnum opus of uh, fantasy. Uh, they're there to participate in it too. Yeah, I won't let that happen. You put it in a good way. The players are the story, and I would be the setup. Yep, it, it it's uh, it laws of physics, right? Every action has a has an opposite or equal and opposite reaction. Uh, they, you know, they act, you react, you provide them a prompt and they react to you. It's a give and take. Langoliers was a weird movie. It was like they got stuck in time and these things, Langoliers were denizens of time and they ate the past to make room for the future. Yes, that is correct, Caden. They're kind of like time Pac-Mans. He thinks there's a lack of RP, though the reason for it is his storytelling style it's super jumpy and sometimes over the top. I personally find it quite hard to RP with the group if he's constantly doing some funny stuff. Did you bring that up as a concern, Party Gnome? Oh, scaring the... Yes, you know the Langoliers. All right, Derek. Uh, so uh, did that make sense for those of you who know the Langoliers about how PCs can interact in the in the DM world in the mod or the campaign? Did you think that was a proper analogy? Think of it like a VCR movie. You tape a show and then you tape over it. There's still a split second where the old movie is erased to make room. Yeah, yeah. Bob, because it turns out you can hold your breath for a minimum of one minute. And in general, you can hold for your con modifier in minutes before anything close to negative happens. Yeah, are you A, B, C, or D personality? Yeah, int J or int P. <laughs> uh, I am a, I am a, uh, I'm an ent J, E-N-T-J. No, E-N-F-J. I'm E-N-F-J. ENFJ. Everyone is on the internet except for INTJs. Oh, really, Bobacus? You you think that that's uh, when I took the test, I came up as uh, ENFJ. Well, that's interesting that you that you you say that, Bob. You know, because I'm not even trying to put on a I'm not trying to put on the common. Can I speak it? I'm not trying to put on a personality for you all. If you walked into my store or you just stop by. You know, if you're saying, hey, I'm out to Cedar Point, you want to meet up and I'll, I'll show you a watering hole, I'll still interact with you like this. Everyone being in the stream and the, uh, everyone being the same person is important for the internet. <laughs> Parties, not yet since it messaged me yesterday evening, and if he brings it up today, yes. Communication is important. Communication is important. Don't be like an anime where they could solve everything in five episodes, but they milk it for 13 or 26 or longer because someone can't say something to someone else. <gasps> Where's my soapbox? <laughs> oh, an INFP. Ooh. Man, all, all these different personalities, yet yet we're all being nerds here at the same table. <laughs> we're nerds. <laughs> uh, I do have a friend that DMs for a group that creates DMPC. He does know uh, and does a lot to be stronger than his players. Never tries to overshadow them. Ah, uh, th that's important too. If, if you're a DM and you create a DMPC or an NPC, 
please don't marry sue them <laughs> don't uh don't make them like where it's suddenly the npc show please don't do that unless it's only temporary or there's a very explicit reason like a niche one dimensional reason for this to happen in the moment I bounce between... Oh, so so Derek, does that like depend if you've had your coffee for the day or something? <laughs> Is your store the one uh, with the 40K bolter? You got it, Doss. Yep, we have the 40K bolter on display, along with uh, a lot of other fun things. Uh, Real Dorgrim, Yobs Gaming, if you don't have the money, you can get the basic DM PDF guide from Watsy, which includes monsters and some DM rules. Thank you for sharing that resource, Dorgrim. Uh, I swap between all 16, depending on what I had for breakfast, if anything. <laughs> this is me waking up. This is me making breakfast, eating breakfast, you know, running to the bathroom. Uh, this is me trying to get to work or whatever. I only do the NPC show when I play with my kids. They can have a problem with thinking outside the box sometimes, so I need to nudge them. Yeah, but that, so that's circumstantial. If you're playing with, you know, rational, reasonable uh, adults, then having the NPC show is uh, maybe not as appropriate. Oh, gotcha. So, yeah, you sort of flip back and forth depending on that. I gotcha. Funny man, you don't really need any books, but in my opinion, Dungeon Master's Guide is the most useful if you're set on getting one. Yes, I I would definitely agree. Uh, there's a the DMG. Let's pop over here for a second. The DMG is very very good in this edition. It gives you so much content. It gives you things to think about. That said, don't read the whole thing. Well, I mean you can. Don't employ the whole thing. <laughs> Take bits and pieces, create a world one step at a time. Don't feel like you have to memorize all this. Or heck, we're having a hell of a... I'm sorry. <clears throat> we're having a heck of a conversation going on over here. You know, even for us long beards, let alone new bloods with advice or people in between, you know, the way that I run is going to be different than Derek's, Bobacus's, Caden's, um, you know, anyone else here. So go with what works. As a DM, can you explain what's going on? Congratulations, you're a DM. That's really all it takes. Everything else is, yeah, you know, knowledge of mechanics or, you know, generally what should I do in a, in a case like this as a reference. Can you explain the world and what happens in it? Can you give an, a reaction to an action? You know, can you, can you look up the hero's journey and the 12 steps of it online and come up with an idea that goes around it, whether it's a one shot, a three shot, or a, a year and a half long campaign? Bobacus has never even read the DMG. He'd rather have a monster manual than the DMG. That That's a technique as well. And I can understand that logic, Bobacus. It is helpful when you're homebrewing. That's true. If you play a bunch of mods and whatnot, you will need the monster manual way more than you'll need the DMG because a module will give you uh, rules or situations or if there's something custom, it'll tell you what to do. I'm not saying that in a derogatory fashion at all, by the way. Scareman's an int P. If your sword's running the board game room. Um uh, indirectly we might be. I don't have the full details of that. We did run the board game room for several years at Colossal Con DOS, and uh there was something had happened that wasn't even explained to me where we the communication was dropped, and I was not given answers as to why it was dropped. And um, so my direct involvement with Colossal Con um, isn't there, but we've been doing some indirect, like, a lot of our nerds will go out to Colossal Con as well. And I'm not saying anything in a way to cause any drama with, uh, with anyone there. It's just we did directly run the board games um, for a while, and then we've been doing uh, maybe some support stuff, you could say. Yes, Caden, you will go nuts if you try and read the DMG from cover to cover. <laughs> yep, reference sections. Your <laughs> The index or the table of contents are going to be your friend here. <laughs> I 
Oh, funny, good advice, Derek. Uh, you and funny seem close to each other's styles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he may he may not hook uh, he may not hook his players as hard as you do, Derek. Kalania is the logician, the logician, int p. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a designation, Bobicus, that has been starting to pop up uh, more recently, I've observed. Uh, even when I got my uh, my master's degree and we were going over this stuff, uh, that wasn't brought up as part of it. Um, so it's it's kind of a, its own little writer. DMG is laid out in such a way where you can start from character creation to backstory to crafting lore. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, now we we did talk about uh, that as a category or how things were added in like that, Caden, or I'm sorry, uh, Bobicus. Yes. ISF. Whoa, we have a lot of eyes in here. Am I the only E? Oh guys, am I the only E? <laughs> I don't know. For all I know, Funny Man might be better at me, but I'm curious to know if he does because I've only experienced it once. Well, f well, Funny Man, <laughs> you gonna answer Derek, Funny Man? <laughs> No, it, it's it, it's not teaching it. It was part of my executive masters of business. Uh, so as an employer, as someone who uh, does have to, who touches on the realm of HR, let alone is uh, is an executive decision maker, uh, we discussed it as a a method for determining qualities of the employees and whatnot. Delcorn's an adventurer. To adventure, I'm three percent extroverted. <laughs> Silver just says, I'm a Pisces. I'm a Libra. Hi, I'm a Libra. Libra, Libra, Libra. You like to give your players anxiety attacks. That style of play is decided upon, but most of my style is high fantasy. Uh, Caden's given some, some D and Dad, right? So, some D and D Dad or Dad and Dungeons or however you want to say it. The way I used to do Dungeons with my kids is that I would randomly generate stories and Dungeons just by rolling them and putting them together. So that the quest is completely random. Oh, that's cool. 